This is One on One. Maura Collingsgrew is uh, Healthcare Program Director at New Jersey Citizen Action. Good to see you, Maura. Good to see you, Steve. Uh, the Affordable Care Act changed the way uh, people interact with the healthcare system. That sounds a bit jargony, but what does it actually mean? Well, what it's actually meant is millions more people getting coverage. Here in New Jersey, 700,000 have come in to coverage under the Affordable Care Act. So it's done a lot to create greater access to health care for New Jerseyans as well as people all across the country. Okay, but in terms of the information people need mm -hmm. and what is accessible to them today, yes. um, doesn't it put more pressure on consum health care consumers in a way that they were really never prepared for, and how do they get prepared to access the system, right. get this information, and be informed consumers? Right. Well, part of the problem is is that the information consumers need oftentimes is not available for to example. them. For example, uh, consumers just coming into coverage don't necessarily always know how to utilize the coverage they've just been given. So um, for consumers who've just purchased health insurance, maybe they've never had it before, mm. uh, they don't know how to actually utilize the benefit. The other issue for consumers clearly is also affordability. Even though consumers have um, purchased the coverage and have financial assistance to do so, we have four out of five New Jerseyans who've signed up for coverage through the marketplace do get financial the assistance. The healthcare marketplace. Yes. Um, but what is often the case is that once they have the insurance, affordability becomes an issue because they have deductibles, they have co-pays, they have co-insurance. All of these things are more out-of-pocket costs that for many people become really a burden. The other issue that we have is often the transparency and information consumers need to actually use their health care coverage is not really available to them. And if it is, it's very difficult to find. So how do you deal with those things? First of all, how do you deal with the increasing cost, your costs that they didn't expect? And secondly, how do you deal with the complexities of insurance? I mean, I've been right. insured all my life and I still right. can't understand it. My wife does it for me. So how do you deal with those things? One of the things that we're trying to do as healthcare advocates is trying to increase the health literacy, do education to help people understand what these actual terms mean and how to utilize the insurance. For example, what is a deductible? What is a copay? Mm -hmm. What is coinsurance? And helping people to really choose the plan that's best for them. One of the other issues we have, though, is that consumers are always trying to catch up, right? The insurance companies and the providers are still in the driver's seat. Consumers are in the car, but we're certainly not driving health care reform. We're more responding to it. And one of the issues that we have is that there needs to be more transparency. There needs to be more transparency about what providers are in the network, what the costs are. Currently, there is no way for a consumer, even those who are insured, to easily find what the cost of their Why? care is going to be. Why, Why is it so difficult? That's a very good question. Put <laughs> <laughs> this out for a second, because Raph and I have talked to, I mean, both on this program, our mm -hmm. other caucus educational corporation programs, Raph mm -hmm. is one of the uh, three great anchors on mm -hmm. Metro Focus. They, as they're, as they're, we all try to break down the Affordable Care Act and mm -hmm. the implementation of it, we've all yeah. heard uh, providers and all heard people from on the hospital side, on the insurance side say, consumers are in the driver's seat. We're trying to respond to the needs right. of consumers. And you just said the opposite. I did just say the opposite <laughs> because consumers are in the car, but they're not driving, mm -hmm. right? We're responding to what is being put out by the healthcare system. And what we would like to see as consumer advocates is more consumer engagement up front. For instance, we recently uh, were trying to increase transparency and find more transparency around cost with the out-of-network consumer protection bill, which unfortunately has not passed in this current session, and we hope to see it again in 2016. But consumers, even those who are insured, can go into an in-network facility and be treated by someone who's not part of their plan and be surprised by after, the, bill. after the right mm -hmm. after the fact. But, but hold on, say, say Raf goes in, mm -hmm. he's very healthy, so he very rarely has to go. But except it, it goes in for preventive care. Mm -hmm. He goes in, 
well care, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. He goes in, he thinks he's, he's in network. Mm -hmm. But isn't it the job of the healthcare professionals to say, Raphael, just to go through this, we're not in your network or we are in your network. Don't they tell him beforehand? Yes, and what I would say is it is their job. And what we're saying is that that disclosure needs to be complete and it needs to be timely. So if your uh, primary physician who is doing mm. your uh, doing your care uh, is in network and you're in a facility in a hospital that you are receiving treatment that is also in your network. You actually could encounter or be treated by other providers who are not in network. In that hospital? In that right. hospital. Uh -huh. And where there's no choice, consumers need protection. Unfortunately- Meaning he can't leave. He cannot yeah. leave, right. 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 So for instance, your anesthesiologist may be out of network. <laughs> wow. You know, someone who a and pathologist. That would be a big bill. So hold on, refs. Oh, I, I hate to go into these details. <laughs> Got a few seconds left. Refs going in for a minor procedure. Yes. They're ready to do what they have to do. Yes. They find out. Get this, folks. That the person that's supposed to put him, you know, yes. under not in network, and Raf now wants to argue. Right. He's not in a particularly good position to do this. Exactly. He's not in a good position. The He's other not, thing is, I can't see. is that, says, yeah, yeah, I'll do without you this time. There's some protection Two now. Left. There's some protection now, but what needs to happen is there needs to be a standard where there's no choice. There's protection across the board and that's board not the right time for consumers. Yeah. That's right. Clearly. Clearly. Raphael, we, we hope you don't face well, that yeah. situation. Well, thank you for it's your yeah. concern. Both of it's you. a very serious situation. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm not joking at yeah, all, right. but thank you, Maura. Yes. Appreciate you laying that out. Thank Raphael, you. good health to you thank and you everyone in the public broadcasting <laughs> family in 2016. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, the New Jersey Education Association, the law firm of Gibbons PC, New Jersey Resources, NJM, NJ Best, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.